Welcome to Tourism Talk. I'm your host, Mary Hammond, director of the Paducah Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I'm glad to be here this spring. Spring in Paducah can mean one thing. It means quilting and dogwoods. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about quilting with my guest, Bonnie Browning, executive director, executive show director of AQS Quilt Week. That's correct. Yes, welcome, Bonnie. I know, and you know what? Our office is just a buzz right now preparing for the quilt show. I can only imagine. I know what it's like in my office. And just this week, as I've met with the uh, Paducah Ambassadors and, and uh, the Paducah Hospitality Association, it's on the radar. We are, uh, ev everybody is preparing for company. We are, and our registrations are flowing in. Good. Our registrations are up already for this year, which is always a good sign that we'll have a lot of people here in Paducah, and we have a great program for them. Good. I love this. I printed it out because I liked the way it was very concise. Five days of 110 workshops, lectures, and classes from leading world-renowned quilters, designers, and authors spread across nine circular areas. I'm trying to, to picture this. Beginning and advanced quilters alike will find something to bring their artistry to the next level. Sure, they can study applique, piecing, quilting, um, technology. We have somebody of coming course. to do something with software in your quilts. Um, appraisal, uh, see that's five. Um, uh, did, I, did I say, I said applique already. Um, color and design. Um, I can't remember the others, uh, but, but it covers every facet that you might have to deal with in making a quilt. One of the ads we had said, come to Paducah, restore your creative spirit. And I believe that's what Quilt Show is doing with all of these classes, getting everyone inspired, get them, get their minds flowing, get those hands flowing and stitching away. Well, and I, and I think too, just seeing the quilts. <sighs> Yes. Do you know, every year we keep saying, how can the quilts get any better? And yet the quilters try new things every time, whether it's they're using different materials, mm -hmm. they're using paint on their fabric, they're embellishing them in different ways, and boy are they learning how to use those sewing machines. I bet. Crystals have really taken off. Well, I really saw those in the last couple of years. Well, let's talk about what do we have right here in front of us. Well, as one of our special exhibits, we are going to have some pieces by the tent makers of Cairo. Now, you know, I went to Egypt in the 1st of December and mm -hmm. picked out the pieces that we would have at both the Lancaster and Paducah shows. And we'll have a hundred brand new pieces that no wow. one's ever seen. And so not only will these be on exhibit, but they also will be for sale. Mm -hmm. Typically, we don't have quilts at our show for mm -hmm. sale. Um, but the, the best way to get these into the country and be able to sell them to help these tent makers was for AQS to buy them. So we bought them, paid the duties and the shipping, and so now we'll be selling them while we're here at the quilt show. And the best part is, is we have two of those tent makers, Tarek and Hossam, who uh, joined us last year in Grand Rapids, and uh, they'll be coming and demonstrating their technique. Their technique is so different from what we Americans use for our applique. For instance, where you see this brown on here, um, that probably was, the, the background is the cream, mm -hmm. and then they would have taken one whole piece to cover the whole brown of this, they mark it on the background, and then they just take their scissors and cut. And wait till you see their scissors are about this long, and they just wield those like they were our little four inch scissors. It's amazing to watch them, and they are very fast when they stitch. They're used to stitching 12 hours a day. That's their livelihood. Now, but these are quilts. They're the three layers. Well, they are in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, when they sew this, you can see that the back of it is canvas. And originally when they made these pieces, they were great big pieces, and mm -hmm. they used them as tents to, to celebrate weddings and funerals and, and religious holidays and any other festival they might have. And so the pretty part was on the inside oh. and the canvas made it heavy awesome. enough that it would hold as, as the support like a building, the side of a building. And, and so they still continue to do that. What happened is someone went and started reproducing mm -hmm. those designs on printed fabric. So now they no longer have a market 
for selling the large pieces. So now they make the smaller pieces to be able to hang in people's homes. And so there are three layers. There's a background and then there are multi layers sure. of applique. And what they do is they catch that canvas as they stitch. And that makes it so it doesn't bag. So it isn't actually sure. stitched in and out like we do in a, a quilting stitch, but it's caught. And so you could loosely call it a quilt, but we call it applique art because it really is art to hang on the wall. They really are. Now, Bonnie, how many of these are in your at your house? Um, five. <laughs> <laughs> Such restraint. Actually, actually, I have to say, I bought two. And, and uh, Tarek and, and Hossam each gave me some pieces, uh, some smaller nice. pieces. So nice. I have several pieces, but you know, I'll use them in my teaching. The ones I sure. bought have beautiful borders on them. And of course, you know, I make my living teaching about borders. And so I certainly can use those and show people the exquisite detail that they put into the borders. Sure. I went on Facebook and friended them. And it's just been fun to follow their, their journey and uh, their challenges and how they're overcoming their challenges of making a living doing this specialized work. Well, do you know, we worked with Senator McConnell's office to get visas for these mm -hmm. two gentlemen to come in. And since then, we have also signed an agreement to be the exclusive representative for the tent makers for both the exhibition and the sale of their work in the United States so that they have one collective place. Very nice. And so we have some other shows now that have requested some of the pieces. Uh, for them to be able to display at their shows and um, and we'll be selling them online as well. There are some okay. on our website already. And that website is? AmericanQuilter.com and right. you just go to Shop AQS mm -hmm. and look for a, a little label that says Quilts for Sale. Very good, very good. Well kudos to AQS for helping out our fellow men in uh, Cairo. Well, did you know there are, there were there were only 18 shops left. Mm -hmm. There used to be about 50 shops that did this, and and so really we hope that we're helping preserve a, yes. a needle art uh, that otherwise may be totally lost. Oh, I'm very impressed. <laughs> How good is that? Well, let's yes. kind of run over the quilt show and see what some of the activities are. April 24th through 27th, correct? And of course, we'll kick it off on Tuesday night with our awards presentation yes, over at that. the Four River Center. And we will be having uh, Aaron Abu, who is a saxophone recording artist, um, that um, will be doing the, the opening of that mm -hmm. as a special entertainment. And uh, he plays a soprano sax, and he's a lot of fun, and I think everybody will enjoy that as our opening. And then, of course, the big thing is we announce the winners and then we go from there over to the um, exhibit halls uh, where we have quilts. Now, one thing that's a little bit different is that the pavilion will not be open on Tuesday night okay. this time. You know, we have so much trouble with lighting and, and the lighting on the outside of the building there. And we don't have any contest quilts in that, in that exhibit sure. area. So we will only have open for sneak preview the Expo Center and both levels of the Convention Center. And are there still tickets available? There are tickets available, and you know we do limit the tickets for that, yes. so they should get their tickets right away so that we don't run out. I always say for those who um, really don't want the crowds, but really want to savor the time seeing those quilts before everyone else sees them, that's, that's a fabulous time to go. Uh, it's, it's, like you said, it's an intimate crowd. It also is a time when, if the winners are here, yes, that you to get to you them. get to spend a little time listening to the, right. the winners and visiting with those winners right there in front of their quilts. It's a real treat. To it is at that time. It is. So that's Tuesday. Then the, oh, everything opens um, Wednesday morning. It does, and of course we'll have a flash mob again. You'll just oh, have good. to wait and see what we do with that. It's always a surprise, uh, and the doors open at nine o'clock uh, Wednesday evening. We have. Um, Alex Anderson is doing mm -hmm. a, a lecture on, on Wednesday evening. Thursday, of course, is our quilt auction. And of course, that's always fun. And again, that will be held in the, in the food tent right there in the parking Outside. lot. Outside, so if you want to just come to that, you can. Don't even have to go inside if, you're, if you just are someone from town who wants to come and bid on some quilts. Yeah, this helps support the National Quilt Museum. Yes, and you know they've, they've done a really fun thing. Starting at five o'clock mm -hmm. that evening, Freddie and the River Cats are going to be oh. playing down there, right there at the food tent. Kind of as to draw people over there to the tent so that they can see what's going on with the auction and, and look at some of the items that they're going to have uh, to be able to bid on. 
That's a true happy hour. Oh, it is. And what's better than having some little jazz oh. right here along the Ohio River? Just, in, just enjoying, <laughs> yes, a spring day outside. It's a perfect setting. That's, perfect setting. That's great fun. And then Friday evening, we have Alex Anderson and Libby Lehman will be over at the Four Rivers mm -hmm. Center uh, doing a program on the big stage. Uh, Ricky Timms asked for a year off this year, so he won't be with us this year, but Alex and Ricky, and I think Aaron Abu is going to be involved with them too, of our course. saxophone player. Well, that'll be fun, and tickets are available for that. How much are those tickets, do you remember? The tickets, I believe, are $26 okay. if you're an AQS member and 35 if you're not an AQS member. One of the things, actually, in, a, in, a, in, in conjunction with us rebranding mm -hmm. our show, we are no longer called the AQS Quilt Show and Contest. Right. We're calling it AQS Quilt Week. And so in conjunction with that, we repriced some of our items mm -hmm. so that every AQS member gets a 20% discount on everything they buy, mm -hmm. whether it's a lecture ticket, whether it's their admission, whether it's something they buy in the booth, anything they buy in the booth, it's all now priced so that that's a benef benefit that Definitely. they get for being right. an AQS member. Right. And so that's, uh, that's actually been kind of fun to, to, to get everything all switched over mm -hmm. and making sure we get everything changed. Well, and it's consistent with every show. Yes. And, and consistent with everything with the American Quilter Society. Yes, and it really that's gives good. them value then for yes. their membership too, which it wasn't so apparent before. Oh, I don't know. That's a pretty good magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and access, um, accessibility to all of the, the books. That's one of my favorite parts, when you like the books. Yes. You know. And that magazine is American Quilter, too. American so if we Quilter, have someone out right. there that doesn't know, you get six issues a year mm -hmm. with your membership. They're keepers. Yes, they're beautiful. They are beautiful magazines. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, um, now, before we go much farther, there are some partners, some sanctioned events that have... Um, uh, bought in with support of, of Quilt Week. And you've got four supporters this year. We do. Of course, we have the National Quilt Museum, yes. and they have a whole list of things that are going on uh, during Quilt mm -hmm. Week. And you can find them on their website, or you can find them in our registration guide as right. well. Uh, and then we have the Rotary, mm -hmm. who this is their 27th year, and uh, they'll have their antique quilt exhibit out at the Civic Center. And there will be free bus uh, free buses to mm -hmm. all of these locations. Um, then we have the Iser Art Center is a new partner with us this year and uh, they will be having their Fantastic Fibers exhibit and Eleanor Burns with Quilt in a Day has three locations. The yes. fairgrounds, her shop downtown and then her address where she has her warehouse on Kentucky Avenue and those two are all listed in our registration guide. We were thrilled to see Eleanor make another investment in Paducah by buying a property over on Kentucky Avenue. Yes, it was and very that's, nice. that makes it real easy for them to be able to have a place to ship all their things. Yes. I'm sure that makes it much easier for them to be able to do it. Sometimes people don't realize um, how famous uh, some of our quilters are that come to Paducah and live here in Paducah. From Carol Fallard, one of the top 20 quilters in the world. Eleanor, I don't know where she's ranked, but she has fans from one pole to the other. Mm. and. Um, what, probably 30 books and has had her show for 25 years plus. Actually, you know, she was just at our show in Lancaster and she now has just published her 110th book. Can you believe that? No, I would have said 40. She's a writing she's, machine, I think. Well, she's, uh, I think that her mind doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. Sounds like somebody I know, Bonnie. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. But uh, we're pleased to have um, Eleanor on, on 4th Street. Um, the, you talked about the shuttle system. It is a pay to play. So the stops that, uh, that are on the shuttle route are that these businesses are supporting the American Quilter Society and promoting their own business yes. by contributing to the shuttle system. And uh, there are quite a few stops, quite a few shuttle routes. And uh, thank goodness for the ambassadors and for um, uh, Charlotte at An Anchor for making those buses get around as fast as they can and be as pleasing as they can. Well, you know, now that we do a, a, a number of shows, mm -hmm. uh, I think our people don't really realize how important that is to the city because mm -hmm. uh, you do have to have that infrastructure of being able to move the people around the city. Right. And, and, and we certainly appreciate the support from both our attractions and the hotels mm -hmm. of, um, of supporting that shuttle service. Yes, and then um, you see many other buses that sometimes people get them confused and say, oh, that bus didn't stop. Well, that was a charter bus that brought people from out of town. And um, 
I haven't got an update recently from Fowler on, on the number of buses expected, but I was talking to one of the restaurants yesterday who told me they had three, three buses scheduled. scheduled. It? it was just uh, in casual conversations. I was glad to hear mm -hmm. that. And I know we usually have any, gosh, probably 50 buses. And we'll have, um, we have two different bus stops. Yes. We have the one bus stop, um, which is the shuttle service that goes to the hotels, um, enters in where the old executive inn used to, and comes along the side of the, of the convention center. Great. That's the shuttle stop. And then the tour buses actually come in on 4th Street mm -hmm. and go around into the parking lot and stop in front of the expo center. And that kind of separates the crowds a little bit too. It so it makes it so that we don't have all the buses in one place and the crowds are separated then too. And then of course, you know, we have uh, the pavilion. We have mm -hmm. some quilts over there. We have an exhibit that is from four continents. Uh, the quilters are from the US, the United Kingdom, Australia, and uh, New Zealand. And uh, so that's, it's called Beneath, Su Beneath the Southern, Southern Sky. Skies. And we also will have an exhibit of AQS authors quilts over there. Some of the quilts from their newest books uh, will be on display over there. Uh, we have an AQS booth in the pavilion and they, they will be having uh, demonstrations by some of our authors there too. So that'll be happening all during the show. Mm -hmm. And, and then, of course, we have the Finkel Building. Everybody loves the oh, Finkel Building. Oh, yes. And they open earlier in the week, don't they? They open on Tuesday from 10 until 6. And um, uh, probably if you went on Monday, there might even be somebody in that back room, but the vendor's set up on Monday. And so the, mm -hmm. it's open Tuesday through Saturday then. And, of course, in the back room is the AQS Hurt Book Sale, Hurt where book they sale. can buy the books yes. for 5 or $6. Everybody loves that. Yes. So... Um, I always tell people if they are discouraged because they're, um, it's hard to get a place to stay during Quilt Show um, in, in Paducah, um, but there we are very easy access to the surrounding area. For the American Quilter Society, one of the perks we do in my office is placing people in private homes. They must be members of the American Quilter Society. And I believe the girls are about ready to wrap up that program. They've just about got everybody placed. Good. And, you know, we always have plenty of homes. People really... Um, come out and and offer their homes. One of the reasons we're able to do this is that um, folks give a portion of their proceeds to a nonprofit organization here in town. So it's a it's kind of a win win for everybody. And, and it makes it so a lot more people could stay right here in oh, the city. Yes. They would have to drive an hour or more now to probably book a room. Probably so. Mm -hmm. Although I will say, anytime you um, anytime you fill a city, there are going to be a certain amount of cancellations. We're just humans, you know. We have things right. that come up. So, yeah, people keep checking our website, paducah.travel. Uh, click on the quilt, quilting button, and there's a, just a, lots of information about the show and what's happening in Paducah. Uh, thank you for bringing Quilt Week to us, thanks to the American Quilter Society. It has um, involved our entire community. There are so many smaller businesses that are not financially committed supporters but they are supporting AQS in, in many ways throughout the, the year and in their shops. Um, and we, th we all thank you for, well, for giving you know, us the opportunity to grow it, and be and on it. It certainly is something that our staff uh, yes. loves working on the show. And I tell everybody the Paducah show is like no other show, not no other AQS show, mm -hmm. nor any other show that's out there anywhere. And part of that is the Southern hospitality and the people in Paducah. You are right, and the, the willingness to people to pick someone up and give them a ride or offer them into their homes if they hear that they're staying far away. Uh, but there's, you know, so there are some people that stay uh, year after year in Marion, Illinois. Yeah. Um, they come in, they use that time, if it be on their bus or in the car, talking to one another, um, just having fun, a part of their road trip. Or, to or that might be their show and tell time too. Show and tell time <laughs> it is. Yes, indeed. Um, and I think that we see that around town. I uh, stopped at Barbecue and More and talked to David Boggs, and he was showing me some pictures of a Japanese group that stopped by to see his own quilting that he had in the shop. So I think he made friends for life. And there are quite a few uh, countries that come during Quilt Show. Can you share with us any of the com countries that you know might be represented? Oh my gosh, I know that we had entries from 43 states and 11 countries. Wonderful. And so we, we have people coming from um, Germany and Australia and New Zealand and um, I believe Japan. we have the Netherlands, Japan, 
uh, United Kingdom. Usually we have some for Spain, and I, have, I, have, I haven't actually looked at the final list of that yet, but they come from all over. Korea. Yes. If they're, if they're quilting, it's on their bucket list to attend the oh, show yes. in Paducah. We did a conversion study just recently where you um, are quizzing the people who, interviewing them, um, who answered your, our ads, our advertisement. And we do one big ad campaign for quilting. And it was really interesting. You could see about half of them were, were people who come throughout the year and about half were those who come to AQS Quilt Show. But I've never seen a conversion study with as many international people who answered, answered our inquiry for, um, did you come? And if you did, what did you do? Yes, and you know, a lot of other countries get a lot more vacation than we do. So when they, go, when they come over here, they can stay for a month. <laughs> And they do. And they do. They do. And um, I know our friends from yeah. Australia that come here, and they'll probably watch this on on uh, the internet. This, uh, <laughs> they they come and stay. Um, gosh, like six weeks. And then they came to Paducah. Um, Hub and spoke out of here. To they've got their favorite shops in Western Kentucky and in uh, Western Tennessee, Southern Illinois, and just made it a big trip. Well, we try to make it the best experience that, they, that we can possibly give them when they come here to Paducah. And I think everybody in the city tries to do exactly that so that when they go home, they have lots of memories and lots of fond memories mm -hmm. of being here in Western Kentucky. We're seeing more and more where the uh, quilters who have been here before will bring their husbands the next time because they see that there are so many other activities mm -hmm. from the River Discovery Center to the Railroad Museum, the Tillman Museum, to the farm tours uh, that are offered through the Extension Office, uh, to go out to the farms to go see the, the old um, antique tractors and uh, there's, you just don't really have an opportunity to do that anywhere else. Or go rent a boat on the lake. Go fishing. Yes, there we go. Get a fishing guide. Go play <laughs> golf in one of the many tournaments uh, or many golf courses around here. So many of these folks will come from places that will still be cold, um, even at the end of April. You know, Mary, sometimes people have a question about where do they eat when they come to the yes. show. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, we work with Neil's Catering, mm -hmm. and he then contracts with a, a whole variety, and I believe sure. this year we have 12 different food vendors, including uh, the Boy Scouts in their strawberry shortcake. Of short course. Cake. They'll be there. Uh, Tradition. Uh, Dale Perry will be yes. there, um, uh, Neil's Catering, will, Bob's Drive-In will be there with burgers, um, uh, Larry Darrell and Darrell with the barbecue, Patties will be mm -hmm. there with their, oh, probably their turkey legs, oh, I yes. think that's what they did last time. Um, at any rate, and we put that in a food tent outside, and, and so it's open uh, from, I believe, from 10 in the morning mm -hmm. till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and some of them will stay open a little bit later than that. Um, they're also inside the convention center and the expo center. There's a concession stand in each of those facilities uh, that will have like grab and go stuff, yes. sandwiches and salads and drinks so that you can pick up something if you're inside. Um, but it's a real party when you get out there underneath that food tent. Well, whenever I, uh, because we stay at the uh, convention center that entire week, uh, go out there, I'd sit down and just make friends. Yes. And then you know it's funny, you start to see those folks that you talk to at the food tent, you see them throughout the week and they start checking in, just making friends and that's part sure. of what makes it such a wonderful experience. Well and then in addition to that we have a number of churches and other groups mm -hmm. around town and those all will be listed in the Visitors Bureau's yes. uh, brochure, which will be, be ready pretty soon, right? Uh, yes, I'm probably by the time someone's watching this, this will be ready, <laughs> but you can go online and already see it. Oh, it's we on may there not now. have the paper piece in hand, but it is online, paducah.travel. Press on that quilt button, so, and it'll take you to AQS as well. And just to find out all about the activities that are going on, because you know someone stops you, they think if you're from Paducah, you know everything that's going on. <laughs> that's right. Well, and some of those churches, too, take different seatings. Yes. So if you have a large group or a bus group, mm -hmm. many times it's easier for you to get them all into one of those places to eat lunch than yes. it is for you to try to stand in line at a restaurant and have them split up all around the different tables. I see from my friends that come to visit and have been now for about 17 or 18 years, the traditions that they have. And they're very, they plan ahead. They download that brochure. They go through and see what they want to do. They highlight it. They do an agenda of what they want to do. 
These are the things we do. These are the churches we get, eat at. Here we go. We make sure to get the strawberry shortcake. Make sure we get the Western Kentucky barbecue. You have to do this. You have to do that. And uh, they love to do it. One of the things we're doing different in the show book this year is we are actually putting a map locating all the different food vendors and where they are out there around the tent. Okay. I understand people sometimes say, I don't know where the strawberry shortcake sure. is, or I don't know where Larry, Darrell, and Darrell is. And this way, it'll be right there in the show book, and they can know exactly right around that food tent where the one that they want to go to. I'm so glad we've had this time, Bonnie. I did want to share with the people who are watching this, in your own business or for your own self, familiarize yourself, yourself and your employees with what's going on so that they can be ambassadors for Paducah when they're out there. If you need brochures, call my office, 1-800-PADUCA. Say, you know, I'd like just a few brochures for my staff so we know what's going on, so we can kind of plan our, our week um, to work with the many visitors as our town doubles in size. Uh, I would love to do that. If you want me to come out and talk to your um, staff, if you're at a restaurant or a hotel or an attraction, be glad to have do that with many different groups. Go and kind of give it just an overview so that you're familiar with things. And of course our registration is open and we have new registration software now where it never closes. Oh, you know, we used to have to cu sure. cut it off so we could print tickets. Well, the way we're handling it now all online uh, through our software, we, we're able to print out that stuff and and after a certain date, they'll have to pick it up at the show, but it still will, they can enter at any time right up until showtime. It's never been easier to get tickets and to be there. So I hope that we will see you at the American Quilter Society Quilt Week. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da-ba-da